Hey guys. So today I was over at my friend's house who's actually moving out of Key West. Why you would ever leave this place, I don't know. Look at this sky today. Just perfect. But anyway, so I was over his house walking around the house saying our goodbyes and I look out the window and something catches my eye and I see a papaya tree that he's been growing since he lived there for the last five years which was pretty good um, pretty big pretty healthy and it had three papayas on it and he said well they're not ready yet but we're gonna do something with this because green papaya is something used in a lot of Vietnamese cooking um, they make green papaya salad where they shred it, uh, mix it in with a little bit of vinegar, some spice, and then usually served on top of a whole fried fish. So maybe we'll go down to uh, White Street Pier today, use the bait we caught, and try to catch us some snapper or grunts, fry them whole, and put our shredded green papaya salad on top. We're loading up the fish assault vehicle. Now let me show you this. Don't get jealous of it. It's pretty nice gets the job done. Look at this beauty. It's almost sunset. Um, we're gonna head down to the pier, White Street Pier here in Key West. And uh, really all I need is like two, two fish, like two even grunts or uh, hopefully mangrove snapper. But down there, they're, they're pretty small. So even if we get mangrove snapper, they're gonna be just just the right size, maybe 10 inches. Um, I don't catch too many big fish over there, but we catch two or three, we're in good shape. Let's ride. So I'm pretty lucky because I live literally a three minute bike ride to White Street Pier. I mean, Key West is a small place, so there's not too much that's far away to begin with. We're on a uh, two by four island. But one of the major pluses here is for me, uh, just to catch some small stuff for dinner, or for a snack, or honestly out of just boredom sometimes, go down to the pier and fish for a little while. And uh, once or twice I've gotten decent fish over there, but it's really, things are gonna be just at the limit. But that's okay, that's all we need. Um, and those smaller guys actually fry up perfectly, so, I wouldn't be mad if that's all we got. So we have our bait that we caught in the cast net the other day, cast net. And then as far as my setup with the fishing pole, pretty simple, spinner rod with a knocker rig. That's it, and I just have that on there really so that I can cast out. So put the bait on, I cast out, and I retrieve real slow. And uh, there's a lot of small stuff here, so we're gonna get bitten off a ton, but hopefully we hook a couple of them just right. So let's give it a shot. So what I noticed is going after the bait is actually not mangrove, not grunts, but what's actually hitting it is what's called a houndfish, also known as a needlefish. Um, we're gonna try to catch one of those, but the problem is they have very, very small mouths. So we're gonna give it a shot. Now, no one down here would eat that, and if you served it to them, they would think you were crazy. But they're actually incredible. All white meat, absolutely incredible. Um, we're gonna give it a shot and try to get one of these guys. All right. So we have our houndfish, also known as needlefish down here. You can see those little teeth. And these guys kind of have the same stink 
that barracuda have. So they come out of the water and they smell like old seaweed. They don't smell great. These guys, it was pretty funny, even while I was fishing. And sorry about that, my GoPro died, so hopefully my phone footage is, it's okay. Um, but a lot of people were like, what are you catching? Oh, you're catching bait. I said, well, no, catching dinner. Yeah, no one, no one down here eats these. What I'm gonna do is actually fillet them, pan sear them, and put them on top of our papaya salad. So for our papaya salad, we have our green papaya, jalapeno, lemon, cilantro, some rice vinegar, soy sauce, and honey. So we'll fillet these like any other fish. A lot like, what do you call it, sardine, things like that. The bones are so small that when you cook them, they actually cook down to where you can eat the bone. Of our one fillet. Now the only reason, the only reason that that meat looks dark is because of the skin on the other side. But if you look at the meat down by the silver part, it's actually very translucent. It's really, really good. Now, I would never think, okay, I'm gonna go down and catch some houndfish, needlefish, to show on my station here. Uh, not a targeted species, but just goes to prove that if you're having a bad day, otherwise, you can kind of always make it up. And really, what you're willing to eat will make a big difference in how your day goes. So now, our papaya. If you have a mandolin, that would work just as good with the julienne attachment. What we're going to try is just a vegetable peeler. Take off all the skin. Oh, that is absolutely beautiful. So, the unripened papaya, a lot like unripened mango is gonna be very, very tart. So we wanna mellow that out with a little bit of sugar, a little bit of salt. But that is a beautiful thing. And actually, with a ripe papaya, a lot of people don't know, you can eat the seeds and they have the taste of arugula or almost like a pepper. Um, I used to grind them up and make a uh, salad dressing out of them. Let me get it cleaned up here and then we'll get it going. What I'm going to do is keep using our vegetable peeler, just like that. So for me, this episode is a little bit more about this papaya than it is the fish that we caught. And the reason why is because one of the interesting things down here at Key West is that we do have a lot of fruit trees and people avoid them because they're a mess. They're an absolute mess. So you think it sounds nice, hey, we have a mango tree. Well, it's nice until you have 200 mangoes falling at a high velocity splatting on everything you want. And you honestly can't eat that much fruit. You just can't. But what it creates 
is that you give them away and you trade and you do all these really kind of amazing things that a lot of people do with fish also because a lot of people catch an abundance of fish that they don't know what to do with and they end up giving it to friends and family and neighbors and that's kind of what happens down here with a lot of the tropical fruit. Check that out. Now I'm gonna add just a little bit of jalapeno. Slice real thin. Some cilantro. One lemon. Actually, we're gonna do only half a lemon because like I said, that papaya is pretty tart. Our honey. Capital vinegar. Some soy sauce. I like mixing with my hands, they're clean. And now from the salt, that papaya is actually gonna release a little bit of liquid. So it's gonna become pretty wet pretty quick. There we go, that's it. I wish I could explain the flavor and really do it justice. So it's very bright, tropical. Tropical is the word that comes to mind. Even with the lemon, the honey, the papaya, because it's not ripe, doesn't have any sweetness to it, so that's why we added the honey. But it still has a lot of bright flavor, because like I said, it's tart. So you mellow out that tartness, and I mean, that just tastes, if you served it to someone, they would immediately think they were on a tropical island. Like I said, a lot of times this is served with deep fried fish. And the reason why is because this tartness and sweetness and the acidity from the lemon will cut through anything fried. So it'll balance out your dish. We're just gonna sear those fillets because I hate frying everything. It's kind of a cop out. So we're gonna sear them, put them on top of this and make our dishes. So it's always good to get a second opinion and again, I feel like I describe things the same as citrusy, bright. Uh, so I dragged my roommate into it so that we can get second opinion. I'm excited. <laughs> oh yeah. It's like super crisp and like the citrus and the cilantro and is there like jalapeno or something in yes, there? Yes, there is. Ooh, so good. <laughs> That's perfect. So I also said we're a spicy house. So we like pepper, hot pepper, red pepper, any kind of pepper. We like spice. Oh yeah. Um, this isn't too much of a kick because you have the honey to mellow it out and other things like that. And you can omit jalapeno if you're not a spicy person. Okay, so I have my needle fish. I got my skillet almost smoking. Actually, it is smoking. We'll lower that just a little bit. So, a little bit of salt on our fillets. And these are gonna cook very, very fast. So. so the reason why I move them when I first put them down is for that exact reason. We got a plane flying overhead so that the skin doesn't stick. So we look good, we're not sticking. A little bit of pepper. So the other thing with these, because they are so delicate and so small, I'm gonna cook them almost all the way through on one side. And you can see as this is coming up, that they're gonna be cooked through pretty much just on the skin side down. And then right at the very end, I'll flip them over, give them a little bit more time, and take them off. 
All right, so you can see on this one, the opaque part is the cooked part, the translucent is the non-cooked, and that's almost cooked all the way through. So we're gonna give it a flip, and then by the time we get to the last one, they'll all be done. I also have what's called hot hands, which means I can't feel anything in my fingertips from cooking. So I would do this with a fork and not your fingertips. So it's that fast. And these really don't have any fat on them or anything. So you do not want to overcook them. Let's see. Bring these outside and get a better look in the sunlight. So see how white that meat cooked up? And the only reason that it had any tint to it whatsoever is because of the skin. And now this is gonna be close to, if anyone's ever had Boston mackerel in the Northeast, it'll be similar to that. They're a little bit oily, but not very fishy. It's a very, very, very subtle fish flavor to them. But there you go. That's a nice appetizer dish. And the papaya salad, the closest thing that I would actually compare it to is a green apple salad. The way the green apple has that really crisp, tart flavor, this is gonna be similar to that. So you could substitute, if you can't get green papaya where you are, you could substitute it with green apple. So the upside to being a roommate with me is that you got a, a lot of food. The downside is that I make you eat a lot of weird stuff that you probably haven't eaten before, but I promise you it's all good. And I will take the first bite and just prove <laughs> It's so good. The, the fish is so subtle. It has the most slight, slight fish taste. It's, it's almost like if you cooked up flounder, even with the skin on it, it's not fishy. There's almost no bloodline in it. And like I said, if you look, it's all completely white meat. What do you think, Scott? It's really good. All right, we're gonna finish these. If you like this recipe, like this episode of Cooking with Clams, hit like, hit subscribe, help me out a little bit, and give suggestions of what you want to see. We'll see you on the next episode.